Welcome to St. Columba Church. Happy Easter. Today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we prepare to begin Mass, we kindly ask at this time to silence all cell phones. Scripture readings may be found on page 274 in the Missal. This Mass is being offered in memory of Margaret Armino. Let us begin our celebration with the hymn, Alleluia, Christ is Risen, in the hymnal number 518. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, this truly is the day which the Lord has made. As we rejoice that Christ has risen triumphantly from the grave, let us now, gathered in his presence, call to mind our sins so that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, God's mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. God's right hand is exalted. I shall not die, but live on you, declaring the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord of love and mercy has brought wonder to our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. 
us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast, so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb Christ has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading the sequence at the top of the page in the Missal, page 281. Christians, to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems. Christ, who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wayfaring. The tomb of Christ, who is living. The glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting. The shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope, is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, victor king, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they put him. So Jesus and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture 
that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Alleluia. Okay, we have to do that again. I'll say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, and you will respond, He is truly risen. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Alleluia. This is the triumphant feast, the mass of all masses, the celebration of of the bodily resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the grave. Our faith rests principally upon this feast. St. Paul puts it very poignantly when he boldly declared, if Christ is not raised, you are dead in your sins and your faith is in vain. Our faith rests upon the experience of the risen one. It was the sight of the risen one that converted the apostles to being bold proclaimers of Christ. It was the sight of the risen one that turned Saul into Paul. It was a pervading encounter with the risen one throughout the history of the church that inspired the saints to give their lives over to holiness. This is our foundation. Christ's resurrection is our rock of faith. He was not merely spiritually raised. He was bodily raised. And if one does not believe that, they are not a true Christian. This has always been our proclamation from the very beginning. Again, as St. Paul said, if he is not raised, you are dead in your sins, and your faith is in vain. We know that he is raised because of the effects of his resurrection. Although we were not there at the tomb, and although even the apostles were not there initially at the tomb before they saw him, they began having glimpses of his resurrection. We heard that in our gospel passage, did we not? how Peter and the beloved disciple, the beloved disciple is John, they come to the tomb. And they go into the tomb, they see the burial cloths, and in particular how some of them are folded. The beloved disciple John sees and believes right then and there. He doesn't fully understand, but he believes even before he has seen the body of the risen one standing before him. Why? Because although Peter and John walked with, Lord th walked with the Lord throughout his ministry, when someone is growing deeper in relationship with the Lord, reclining on his heart, even as John the Beloved did, they begin to take more careful note of what the Lord is doing. As close as Peter was to the Lord in his earthly ministry, John was much closer. He was more observant of particular details. And so when it says, John saw how the burial cloths were folded, and he believed, he saw that they were folded in the way that Christ would fold his garments and his napkins. He saw the fingerprints of the risen one, that this could only happen if the one whom his soul loves the one whom his soul delighted in in this life, was truly raised. Do you see the powerful faith of John? John knew the Lord so closely that just by seeing how something was folded, he could see it was Christ that folded it. And Christ could have only folded that if he was raised. But more so, beyond that, Peter and John, the apostles, all beheld the risen one. That is the cornerstone of our faith. Our faith is based not on myth, but on the culmination of human history. Remember this, 
We were made in the image and likeness of God. And there's a twofold truth there. Not only is our soul made after the likeness of the divinity of the Son of God, but our own body, our flesh, was made after the likeness of the body he was going to assume. Contemplate that mystery. Our flesh, our body was designed when our first ancestors were created in paradise. Those bodies were designed after the likeness of the forecoming body that Christ would assume. So we are also made in, in a human sense, in a bodily sense, after the likeness of the Son of God. This is the culmination of our history. And as such, we proclaim not only Happy Easter, but we say Blessed Pascha. If you ever hear the Europeans greet one another, whether Western Europeans or Eastern Europeans, when they greet each other for Easter, they will say something which in English means Blessed Pascha. The Italians, for instance, what do they say? Bona Pascha. Bona Pascha, right? Blessed Pascha, Happy Pascha, literally means Happy Passover. That's what it literally means. So whenever you and I say Happy Easter, we're saying an anglicized form of Happy Passover. But of course, we're not referring to the Passover that our ancient Jewish brethren celebrated in Egypt. We are referring to the new Passover, the one in which Christ our Lord passed over from death into eternal life, not just in soul, but in body as well. So the church triumphantly proclaims Happy Pascha, Happy Passover of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we experience his risen presence now, just like the disciples on the road to Emmaus. They experience his presence in the breaking of the bread. We are going to draw near to the altar in a few moments' time to partake of him. And what is the Lord's solemn promise? He who eats the flesh and drinks the blood of the Son of Man has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. By partaking of the body of the risen one, we receive a foretaste and pledge of how our own bodies will be raised up on the last day. Christ's bodily resurrection is the first fruits of a general wider harvest that will happen at the end of time when we are raised up. So if Christ is not bodily raised, we will not be bodily raised at the end of time. But truly, Christ is risen, and he has triumphed over the grave, trampling upon death by his death. And to those who are in the tombs, he has given eternal life. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Alleluia. Please stand. In place of our usual proclamation of the Nicene Creed, we will have the solemn renewal of our baptismal promises. And then we'll have the sprinkling of holy water as we are renewing our baptismal covenants. So just be ready for the sprinkling. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, that is the passion and resurrection of the Lord, we have been buried with Christ in holy baptism. And now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew our promises that we made in holy baptism and confirmation, by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve Almighty God in his holy church. Therefore, I ask you, 
and give a resounding I do. Do you renounce Satan? and all his works, and all his empty show. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Please join in singing the sprinkling song in the hymnal number 205. On this most holy day, when Christ broke the chains of the death of death and has risen triumphant from the grave, let us with one mind and heart present our prayers to the Father. Please respond, risen Lord, hear our prayer for the church throughout the world, that she may rejoice in Christ's triumph over sin and death. We pray to the Lord, risen Lord, Lord hear our prayer for the human family that it may work together to establish true peace and justice among all nations and peoples and for all who are serving in harm's way. We pray to the Lord. Is in the Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, 
that we may respond to our baptismal covenant by ministering to the needs of our brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. For the newly baptized and newly confirmed, that they may carry the light of Christ into the world darkened by sin. We pray to the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. For those who are sick and for their caregivers, that they may be strengthened by the death and resurrection of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Officer Jonathan Diller, NYPD, Janine Belizzi, Diana Monaco, Sidney Perez, and Rebecca Rodriguez, may they rejoice forever at the Paschal Feast of the Kingdom. We pray to the Lord. We pause as we add our private intentions. We pray to the Lord. Eternal Father, your only begotten Son, when risen from the dead, appeared to his apostles and disciples, thereby confirming the foundation of our faith. Grants, we pray, that we may be his faithful disciples and witnesses in this world, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Our offertory hymn is The Strife is Our in the hymnal number 525.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable before God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, with the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the loss of the Holy Church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your Church is wondrously reborn and nourished, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to reclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, over overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of your service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable 
so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenants, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the glorious resurrection from the dead, and the ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Amid us we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. 
to him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, God ever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ.
what has passed our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Father Michael, myself, our deacons, we just wish to extend to you and your loved ones a very blessed Easter, a blessed Pascha, because the joy that we receive from the Lord this day is meant to change our daily lives, exude out to those around us, even in very ordinary moments. And may our love of the Lord be like the love of John, the beloved disciple, where we can recognize the fingerprints of the Lord's presence in others because we know him deeply in our own life. We know the risen presence of the Lord truly within us. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in the eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander about the earth, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is Jesus Christ is Risen Today in the hymnal number 540, and we will sing verses 1 and 4. One, two, and four. <laughs> 